Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to do a DIY concrete foundation for a garage or a shed. Now this was the gravel base that the homeowner had done. He took control of that, so he hired an excavator to come in here and dig this out, install the gravel, dig the trenches around the outside. And what he hired me to do was a 6 inch thick concrete slab with the edges thickened to about 12 inches thick. So. This is a, what we typically call a monolithic slab. And you could use this for a garage or a shed, like I said. So the first part was just to get the forms set up. So we had to get everything off the truck, get them laid in place. It's 16 by 24, so we could use 16 footers for each end. And then we had a 16 footer and I cut an eight footer for the two sides to make it 24. So we're gonna get these all laid in place and then I, I'll get them screwed together and then we can get them up and pinned and squared and set to grade. But this was, this was the basic process right here of, of getting it formed up. Now the subgrade, you know, the gravel they used was kind of what I call bony. You can see those bigger rocks there. I typically like a little bit finer gravel, but it's perfectly good enough for what we're doing here. You know, the excavator dug that out probably a couple feet, put in a couple feet of gravel and compacted it in lifts, six or eight inch lifts as he put it in. And that's what we were left with. It was actually pretty level when I checked it with the laser. So it, it was pretty easy to work with other than driving the pins in and hitting some of those big rocks. That was a that was kind of a pain. So what we're doing now is we're measuring out our lengths to make sure we got our exact measurements. So I want to measure out 24 feet there and then I can screw that corner. Then I measure over my 16 in the back, get that corner screwed, and then measure back up here 24 feet, mark it, and then I can get that corner screwed in place. And that gives me my exact dimensions on the slab that I need. And then the next step will be just to get it squared. We basically go, you know, diagonal corner to corner, make sure we got the exact same measurement. And I've never had a problem squaring a slab that way. It's always been perfectly square. We just slide one side, you know, one way or the other until we get the exact same measurements and then we double check. And when we do, that's good. Then we'll get the corners pinned and then run a string and then we get everything else pinned in place. So that's basically about as easy as it is. I teach all this stuff to guys in the concrete underground so if you want to check that out there's a link down below in that and I have a concrete slab course where I go over everything step by step and in a lot more detail than a video like this. So we're just putting wire mesh in here for reinforcement and then we're going to put a double row of rebar in the edge and I'll tie it right to the wire so when we pour we'll have that reinforcement right in the concrete. And we also usually use a fiber mesh reinforcement in the concrete too. So we have a double reinforcement. And that's a pretty simple basic pour for us. You know, we use the fiber mesh. And in a case like this, we'll use the wire with the double roll rebar. I'm going to use, I'm going to use my, my Topcon laser for this. This is a self-leveling laser. So I basically just take it out of the box, set it on, hit the on button. It self-levels itself. And then that's what we use to set our grades with. Once we get our grade set, then we just screw the boards right to the pin like this. I have a link for that laser down in the description below too, guys, if you want to check that out. That's what I recommend for a laser for any type of construction work like this. That's probably the best one I've ever used. All right, so it's pour day. And we're going to get this poured. We got a 3500 PSI mix with fiber mesh in it. It's got a little bit of air entrainment because of freeze and thaw here in Maine. And then we also use a, a mid-range water reducer. So we can pour, you know, a 6 or 7 inch slump. That slump is how wet or dry the concrete is. 6 or 7 is fairly loose. It's a good workable slump. But with the water reducer, it doesn't hurt the strength any to pour it that loose. You can see I'm pulling up on the wire as I go, so I'm getting that up in the concrete. And we'll get a slab this size, you know, for us, we'll get 90 some odd percent of it poured right out before we start screeding it. We're going to be able to screed right off the top of those forms. 
So that's going to make it a lot easier too when we do something like this. Now we're going to put a, a two foot knee wall on top of this thing also. So make sure you stick around for the end of the video to see the knee wall we did. That came out really, really nice. Occasionally the owner will ask for some type of knee wall on it, whether it's a eight inch curb or a 12 inch curb or a two foot curb. And we'll go back and we'll, we'll do that knee wall. We usually typically do them afterwards on top of the slab. This one, this, this garage slab was cut into a banking, so he wanted to be able to backfill up a little higher, so we're gonna put a two footer on this one. Luke's using the big dobby on the edges to mag float the edges, you can see that. That works pretty nice. This is basically how we do most our pours. We'll get most of the concrete poured out first. Then we'll jump right back and, and get it screeded because it really doesn't take us very long to screed. If this is something you're doing yourself, you know, you don't need to pour this much out like we do. You could pour out a third of this and get it screeded, then pour, do it in thirds like that. You could do half of it if you want. But basically you got so much time per truck, per yard, and as long as you pour within your allotted time, they won't charge you any extra. Every company's a little different, so just check with them. Ours is about seven or eight minutes per yard. So we have, you know, this is ten and a half yards we got here, so 70 or 80 minutes. And this basically probably took us 15 or 20 minutes to pour something like this with the four of us. So you, can, you should be able to get it down in time. We're using a magnesium screed. We've got all kinds of different lengths. So we're just using the 14 footer here because we can we can wet screed. They do make a 16 footer. So if we had a 16 footer, we could screed right off the top of the forms. I just we like the 14 for doing most of our stuff when we hand screed. You can see how easy that is for us to screed. We kind of kick in our feet, kick in the the uh, holes left by our boots as we screed. So we just keep going without stopping. And now that we know we don't have too much concrete in there, we can fill in the rest. We don't want a big pile outside. We typically want just a little bit more than we need. And then when we step out, we can just finish off the screeding process. I'm going to be sticking in some rebar uprights here too to kind of anchor that curb wall on top of the slab. Tia's going to grab the bow float. She's going to she's going to bow float this stuff. The concrete we use when it's a 3,500 pound mix, it bow floats really, really nice. Usually just one pass down and back with a six inch slump, seven inch slump like this. And it fills it in really good, makes it nice and smooth. Now you could leave it bow floated if you want for a finish. You could go over it with a Fresno to finish it. You could power trowel it. We're going to stay and power trowel this today and get it really nice and smooth and then we saw cut some joints in it but you can see how smooth the bull float leaves it the only thing the bull float does is it leaves those a little bit of a line on each end here's me putting in the upright I'm gonna put these uh, I don't know every five or six feet around the outside and that'll kind of tie in the, the knee wall that's going on top Well, that's the slab pour and then the uh, curb wall is coming right up we're gonna put aluminum forms two foot high all the way around this thing and then we'll just bond out for the garage door and the pass door hey everybody Mike here so we're getting ready to pour this little knee wall right here on top of the slab we did the other day it's a two foot knee wall we're gonna go all the way around it this is the garage door opening right here, so we'll leave that out. And we've got a little man door, a three foot door over there we're going to leave out. But this is it, two foot panels. we got aluminum panels. They're three foot. These panels are three feet. You start from here, go to here. So they're all three foot panels. And we'll just pour the concrete right inside. We've got a mat of rebar, a couple, a couple rows of rebar in there. we got rebar uprights coming up out of the slab. So this is it.
So that's it, we got it all filled in. Time to top it off now. Top of form is top of wall. This is the bond out for the garage door right there. See, we're using the DeWalt pencil vibrator to make sure everything's vibrated really good. That thing, that thing works really, really good to vibrate with. So when we pull these panels, you know, we'll show you after we pull them, be, be another day or two, but these walls are going to be really, really smooth. These aluminum forms give you a really nice, smooth finish. How'd you get this job just keep called you inside? All right, so we got our 16 by 24 slab done. We got a two foot wall we put on it, knee wall. We did the wall, knee wall after using aluminum forms. You can see how nice that came out. Three foot panels and then, you know, you got your fill panels, 16 by 24. We've got the rough opening for the garage, rough opening for a pass door. But that's it, came out really nice. See how square everything lined up really nice. Looks good.